everyone, we are doing the next part of this Ivy and the Inky Butterfly Dragon Treasure page today. Now, I'm not quite sure exactly where I'm going to go with this, but I thought I might start with some of these beads right down at the bottom. Let's come in a tad closer. Now, like these beads up here, they've got lots of different patterns on, but I think we'll do the same as we did up here and ignore the patterning and just make them look round and shiny if we can. I think that might just be a nice way to go. Um, I'm just trying to pick the pink that I thought I would use. This one, middle purple pink. I thought we would do, I, I'm gonna do them all the same. You might decide that you would rather um, not have them all the same. Now, actually, I'm just gonna grab a black because if you look carefully at this one, for example, a little hole in it where it's you know should be on this thread so I'm going to just colour in that hole in black and do the same on that little one I think that might be the only one so just having a quick look yeah so we'll just do those black and now we'll do these um do them in this so I'm going to start here this one is a strange shape due to the fact that it's uh sort of behind the um whatever that is pot um container i don't know so what we want to try and do is take a darker layer around the edge so layer it up more and then fade it towards the center like that and i've got some small ones i think i'm just going to do them all the same like we've almost got a small spacer bead in between the more larger ornate beads but uh, we'll just keep it all the same I think it just makes it a little bit simpler I'm trying to simplify it a little bit I don't want to oversimplify it but on the other hand I don't want to make it diff more difficult than necessary and I think you know, it would make sense if all the beads were the same colour. The fact that they're all different patterns, and this one isn't even patterned, it's a little bit strange. But Jana does like putting her details in. So we're just going to work along. Just, oops, I've overlapped that one. It's a very old smell around here today. <laughs> I'm sure you want to hear about it. Now it smells like someone, I heard a noise outside and it sounded like fire, like a bonfire. And there's a sort of slightly weird, might be ash type smell. My husband was outside last in the evening quite a bit. He said it smelled like ash blowing around. Um, it could be that someone's got a big fire somewhere nearby. Um, people do have bonfires and th things like that. It's a little bit early in the day for a barbecue. A barbecue smell really different. This doesn't smell like um, um, charcoal. It smells much more like um, wood ash smoke. And I do know the difference because we have a wood burning fire that can smell the difference between a coal and a wood fire there's a it sounds weird but a more dirty smell I'm talking of smells my son was telling me it was a really interesting thing he'd read it online he was talking about it that in the English language we have hardly any names for smells he said can you name describe a smell and I said sweet he said describe the smell of banana i said sweet he said yeah but that's the taste not really the smell so, yeah, maybe and then and then i said well the only smell yeah sort of musk is a smell but we don't really have lots i think he was getting somewhere because if you say something smells like ash i mean ash is the item it's not a description specifically it's not a different word for the smell which is interesting so uh, and I said 
it's sort of musty and he said maybe but anyway it's interesting it's quite difficult to describe smells because we would normally say the smell of something rather than it being a, its own sort of thing but anyway it's, uh, I don't think we're that sensitive to smell but what he told me once and I don't know if this is true you know when, when your kids tell you stuff they've read on the internet never quite sure why that you know how when you know smell of rain we can smell when it rains we can smell the rain and we can actually smell that smell before the rain comes and that is something that other animals can't do they can't smell that smell of rain coming which is interesting I don't know how we would know that animals can't smell it but anyway I guess it's useful if you're out and about and you want to get shelter before you get soaking wet or maybe some um, other animals behave differently in the rain you know so that might be useful to us in some way if we're sort of hunting or whatever because uh, they might go and shelter or like um, birds um, worms come up to the surface in the rain and birds come out to eat them so that affects their behavior because worms are um, I remember trying to get worms to appear out of the ground when I was at school um, it was a biology thing we were trying to um, we put a sort of meter frame on the playing field and then we watered it and then we tapped it and worms come up to the surface because it's wet and uh, we were supposed to count how many we saw didn't, didn't work at all but um, that's why birds tap the ground because they trick worms into thinking it's raining which is interesting you wouldn't think that all rain would make that higher tapping noise I mean it did earlier in my video yesterday when I could hear the noise and I couldn't work out what it was and it was rain it was really tapping and it was so loud I thought it was like dripping water or something coming into the house and my um in here my window isn't open so uh, it was quite strange but um you know I guess maybe when you're under the ground it's really loud and I guess if if it's useful for you to be about when it's raining then maybe you would be more tuned into the sound now I want to put a few darker bits on some of these beads I've got the red violet and what I'm going to do is I'm just going to put a few sort of shadow marks in some areas like the bottom and where they're overlapping a bit it's not making a huge difference maybe I'm just being a bit fussy now we're going to put a white line on these like we did on the um beads that we did before also outline them in white I try and make sure my hands nice and steady <laughs> I'm not going to go around all the intricate details though with white I don't think it's necessary and it's a lot of work and I wouldn't keep it that it wouldn't look that neat um, I'm going to use my jelly roll 8 for this um, I'm going to tad closer. So I'm going to work from this side to this side so I don't smudge it. Um, actually I didn't go around the edge of the other beads. Does it need it? It'd be hard. I'm not sure. I'm going to try just putting the shine on them. See whether 
I think it needs it. Maybe it doesn't. There's a lot of fiddling. Now work in the direction that will mean you don't smudge what you've just done. Now with polychromos, I know for sure that this colour is not going to um, bleed into the white because polychromos don't do that. But if you're using an alternative pencil, this is the type of colour that's going to bleed because they tend to so just be warned of that. They look quite bright and cheery, don't they? We do need to do the string thinking I might do it in this red violet. I could have just chosen a black like I did for the others, but I think it's a bit more interesting. I'm going to nestle my hand in there in between where I've done the um, pen, so hopefully I need to sharpen that. It's so thin. Um, hopefully um, I won't smudge. needs a sharp pencil. There we go. Now when I watched Johanna slip through her new book I didn't see any really intricate pages like this. I think there might have been one. Um, there were pages with lots of, with a selection of smaller designs on which I really like. They're great for videos. Um, aren't so keen on those pages um, like in small victories okay now where should we go how long have we been going not very long I'm wondering whether to go for coins but I feel like I should do all the coins although I can't there's loads in the treasure chest as well mm, we could just do these coins that are here um, let me just grab some pencils because I've got to move my book it's going to cover over the pins. There we go. It's coming a tad closer. There we go. So I've got, um, what, what should we do? I'm just trying to work out what colours. I think that one and that one. So I'm thinking two colours and we could do some in silver and some in gold. I tend to keep them quite straightforward. So we'll start with a, um, silver colour. So this is cold grey 5 and do this one. So what I tend to do is just take, make it very dark here on this edge and then fade it. Now I'm thinking the shine might be about, might catch the light about here because it's sort of resting on this pot. So I'm going to fade it up there a bit like that and here just a little bit there. And same here, I'm going to take it darker there, fade it like that. Then we're going to grab our cold grey 3, which we're going to sharpen. So cold grey 3, and we just continue. <laughs> that was good. Is my sharpener full? No, that's unusual. hours later she sharpened her pencil it's coming <laughs> oh it's broken again what's going on with my sharp oh my sharpener is full um, hold on a minute right back with a sharp pencil it was just that the sharpener was full I immediately was able to sharpen it after so I want to leave a bit of white like that and um, we'll do a few of the other coins over here in silver as well um, do this one down here I 
you want to make that one light in the middle, you could just use one shade of pencil for it. I think that would be quite dark under there, there would be some shadow. And then I'm actually just going to go light with this one called Grey 3. trying to pick them without looking too planned, if you know what I mean. I'll do this one. Again, dark a bit under there and then get our cold grey three. Work some colour to the middle. Like that. Um, do one more, this is the cold grey five. Um, uh, two more, maybe this one at the back. And this one here. The phone's ringing. Grey 3, it sounds like it's for me. I'm gonna go. Right, I am back. Let me have a think. Are we doing this one? Um, this is the cold grey 3. I think we probably knew. Yeah, the um, company just called, book us in to get the radiator fixed tomorrow, which is good. She said they had a cancellation, so it's quite handy. Right, time for the gold ones. Um, I'm going to use a little bit of brown ochre and then the green gold. Um, green gold works well on its own, um, but sometimes it's nice just to have a little bit of a darker colour first. I'm going to use the same technique. So just bringing it in from the edge like that. I'm actually going to do all of them with this first and then put the green gold on after. Now, the shade, you could use a darker brown, a more orangey brown, um, even a sort of terracotta, and then you get different shades of colour. But uh, I quite like this sort of yellowish, goldy colour. Here we go, green gold. Um, but when we do the coins on the other side, maybe I'd better write this down so I remember what I used, because perhaps they should be the same colour. Maybe not. I'm just looking up. There's a few more coins up here, but we'll do those when we do that bit. Maybe they don't all need to be the same colour. Why? Why would they be? So leaving this little bit of white helps to give the illusion that they're shining. Now you could um white the edges but I feel with the coins if you wipe this bit it's not always obvious that that's the edge and that's the top the line helps us to see what's going on I think so I'm going to leave those um, we could dim them down with a little bit of like we did on the on the gold I think I'm gonna leave it now, we've got odd bits of gemstones down here, but I think I'm going to do this snake shield. <laughs> Scary stuff. There's another snake on the other side as well. So, uh, let's come in a bit. Um, I'm going to do quite a dark green for the snake. Why do I keep touching it? Um, I think I'll use the chrome oxide green fire. It's not really, really dark. It's quite dark. And I'm just going to block it in because it would be sort of painted onto here. It's not um, a real one, thank goodness. It's just a pattern. So we'll just block it in. And I'm trying to decide what to do for the rest of this. Whether to do a sort of metallic looking edge to the shield. 
or not. Um, whether to do it sort of wooden in the background. I think I might do that. Do a different shade of wood, different colour of wood to the um, table. This could be, they could be on the floor of course, not the table. But I'm pretty sure it's a table. There's a big treasure chest there. Maybe it's the floor. I want to make sure that when I do on the other side there's a unicorn and the way I did it I didn't like the last time. What I'm going to use, I'm going to start with this um, brown ochre, I know I used this before, but I'm going to use it with the sienna on this shield and I think it might work quite nicely. So I'm just going to do a light background layer. So I'm holding the pencil really far up, put it on its side just gently put it in and it looks nothing like um, the coins anyway it's sort of lighter anyway and it's I'm going to put a darker colour with it rather than a lighter colour so this is the colour I think I'm going to use the burnt sienna so I'm going to put a bit of it under here as if it's a bit of shadow from that edge more of it there. Ooh. There. But here we can't. There's a tiny gap in there. It's all right. There we go. And then I'm going to use my burnt sienna to just go like this. I'm going to put in some wood grains in tiny lines but because it's treasure it needs to have some sort of metallic or gemstone-y type thing going on with it I think so that's why I'm going to make the very edge of it gold I feel like I want to make sure that's right butt up against that black line there or else it doesn't look like shadow just get a few more lines along there there we go now I'm going to do the gold in the same way you've done it on the coins you've got a brown ochre I think um, I was going to make it darker there but I think it would the shine would be there. No, I'm going to make it darker there because it's shaped, I think. A bit there, a bit down here, and then there. Like that. And then the green gold, I'm just going to sharpen. green gold Now we have these gemstones. I'm quite keen to do those next, as you may have guessed. I'm going to start with quite a fun colour. This is the cobalt turquoise. We've got the turquoise blue. I think I will do this big one here. So we're going to do them similar to the ones we did at the top. So starting with the dark and just fading off. Same here, I'm going to do it from the bottom. So sort of taking random directions. And then I'll grab a different colour in a minute for some of the others. Oh, for this one and then different colours as well for the others. I think I'll go that way for 
that one. Um, this one will go down that way. Like that. And then I'm going to use, whoops, I'm going to use, whoops, cobalt green to do the rest. It's very blunt. So I want to fade this down to white. And again there. Just trying to think about when I'm going to be able to fit videos in tomorrow. I've got guys coming between 10 and 11. I'll be able to do some early. Maybe the husband will be, won't be leaving for work till after 9. She also said it depended on how long their job before took. I think we'll take that down a little bit lower because we've got quite a bit down there. And now I'm just going to grab the black. Remember, I'm putting a little bit of black in. Oh, I've got it out already. Couldn't find it. <laughs> we used it for these beads. We? So just a little bit in a few places. Remember gently to sort of work it in very lightly. Do it in every bit. That bit isn't worked in enough. There we go. We're going to put some white pen around there, but we're going to do the other ones first. I quite fancy doing um, a reddish orangish one. So I've got my light cadmium red, which is quite an orangey red to start with. I'm going to do this one down here. Copy come in a bit more for you. There we go. So light cadmium red and just all sorts of directions for these edge bits. And this one sort of across like that. It's quite quick for this one because um, it's small. We sort of know what we're doing now as well, which helps. This is the orange glaze I'm going to use with it. So I'm just going to extend all of those areas, trying to leave a bit of white. Like that. And then I'm going to grab the black. In every place, I think that's plenty. It's quite a pale colour. Now we're going in here. I think a little bit about this pot. I think I might do that in gold with maybe these as gemstones, or I might do it in silver, one or the other. So this doesn't matter too much. Um, I think I will do a. I was going to do green. We've got this green going on. Let's do a red. Um, start with this one. This is the deep red. Oh, I've got an itch. Right. Now this one's small, so I may just use this one colour. It's really quite tricky. Yeah, I think that's okay. I am going to use a bit of black just to give us a little bit more contrast. So, a bit of black in that corner there and here. There we go, that's plenty. Down here I'm going to do a mauve. Okay, it's a sharpen. Um, make it dark here because I've gone over the lines. Up 
Ne, wenn er doch. Yeah, maybe I'll have to do an extra video today to fit it in. easier to blend it into the mauve because it's quite a dark colour as it is. Got this one here. Pencils are running around everywhere. Um what haven't we used? We haven't done pink. Oh we've got pink right there. Let's not do pink then. Um a darker blue. What's that? Yeah let's do this in down three in blue. That's going to be quite a contrast to this one. Now this is one of these sort of flat ones like this, but we can't see much of the face so I think I'm just going to go like that. It's quite dark this, need to make sure I fade it carefully so that so I leave a bit of white. really need much black because it's quite dark. I might put a bit there and in that corner. There we go. I've got a couple more which I'm going to do before I get out my white pen. These two here. Now again pink would be quite, we haven't done a pink one yet but no. Um, let me think. We could do another, we could do a green over here because we're not near our snake. Um, let's do the hooker screen. It's quite dark. I like quite dark colours for my gemstones. Don't want anything too pastel-y or hooker screen. Not that um, um, we have many pastels in this set but can I just fill in that section completely. Quite awkward this. I'm just going to do it slowly. Uh, take that one down from that point. This one can come up. And then maybe from the right. Quite tricky that. I'm going to put a little bit of black in there. It's going to be quite hard. On this edge a bit. There, I think that's it. It's, it's very awkward. Now this one, quite fancy another red. We can do that, can't we? Um, this is pale geranium lake. that bit of contrast. Right, I'm going to grab my white pen now and do some bits and pieces with this. So my Jody Roll 8. So I'm going to outline the whole of these. If my pen wants to work. There we go. something under the desk. I was like, what's that noise? And my toe was moving while I was concentrating on doing these lines and I didn't even notice. And it's just scraping against something under the desk. There's a paper bag under there. It's one of the, yeah, it's a bag of bags. You know how you have those. We used to always have them in kitchens. Um, in, under the sink or whatever, a bag of carrier bags. But nowadays, supermarkets don't give out carrier bags. You buy them or you take your own. I'll take my own. I would have for ages anyway. 
and um, so these bags are, are um, gift bags or you know paper bags which I used to put like presents and things in for people but I'd got such a collection I've been trying to get rid of some which had been semi-successful got rid of some because some um, Bit, something a bit of a clear out of the boys bookcase so I was putting books in them to take to charity shop but we need to finish that job we've only got a quarter of the way through it and then um, and then Wimbledon started and husband had time off work then um, I had to try and catch up with my work and then um, bathroom job was done so it got all a bit distracting there we go hmm I'm wondering whether to take off I think I'm gonna move the top of that I think it will look more shiny without that on there and I'm wondering whether to do that with the coins just remove the top <laughs> Good noise. Hmm, a pondering noise. I'm not sure. I'll try it with this one over here. You can't see that one. So I won't try it with that one. I'll try it with this one. I think it's going to be better. do it with all of them. I don't need to do it with the bottom so much because there's shadow under the bottom. Yeah, it definitely looks better. Look at work eh? Now, if you don't have a white pen, um, I would recommend one. They are just add so much to your colouring. Anyone who's got one would agree. I'm sure that being able to just add a little dot here and there, a little highlight, it just makes so much difference. And whiting out all the lines is cumbersome, and I wouldn't recommend it but I mean some people really like doing it they feel that gives the picture a more realistic look and that sort of thing but um do these um yeah it takes a long time yeah I do think they look better you can still see their coins you can still see some of the black I'll do this one as well Um, yeah, if you're writing, whiting out everything, it'd be there for quite a long time. I've got no idea how long this video has been. We've only done this bottom bit, so let's have a look. We could do a little bit of something from here. I've got time to do a bit more. So I was thinking about these swords. We could do those. I'm looking at them. Now, I have a technique for doing swords, which I'll show you. And uh, then we can do the handles. This is for the blade. It um, doesn't matter what grays you use, really. I have to use cold gray five. And what I tend to do is I do a diagonal um, coloring. So I start here, up here, and then go diagonally here and then fade. Okay, and then I'm going to start here and do the same thing. Now I'm going to get my lighter grey, which is my cold grey 3. I'm going to go over this bit down here that I've done and allow it to fade, but put a little bit of this one in the middle. 
and then there, like that. So it looks, <gasps> someone's shouting outside, it looks like we've got a sort of silvery look, hopefully. We might white out this and it might help as well. Now this handle bit, this is obviously the hand guard and handle, we could put a little gemstone on here. This looks like it might be wrapped around in a leather, maybe. Um, let's have a think. Let's do a brown leather handle. So we've got a burnt humber. I don't really know anything about swords, so I've got no idea if that would be right. So what I'm going to do is just make it quite dark here and then fade it. And the same here. I wonder if that's supposed to continue to there. That's how I'm going to do it. So I want lots of layers on that edge. Less in the middle, because I'm thinking that's rounded. And we're going to get a lighter brown. Mm, use this one. Oops, can't get it out. The nougat. And we'll go over the top of what we've done. Lots of layers on the outside, less towards that centre bit. I don't want to shine loads of shine, maybe just a lighter area, just to make it look more rounded. I hope that's worked. Now this um, guard I think might be um, metallic. So I'm going to go back to my Colgrey 5. I'm going to put quite a intense bit at the bottom. I sound like thunder. But it might just be a lorry, sort of rumbling, you know, a lighter towards the top. So it might look a little bit shiny. Then what colour? Quite tempted to do black, a black gemstone, because this is like a, a bloke sword, man, manly man, black black sort of um, awnings. Is that right? So lots of intense black colour around the outside. Then less you can if you don't like the idea of doing it black, a dark blue, dark green, something like that would work perfectly well. Red even. There we go. It looks a little bit lighter on the middle helps to give it a more rounded look and we'll get some um pen on there. But we'll do the other sword. It looks more like a cutlass. Why do I say that? Because it gets thicker. Because I'm obviously the expert in weaponry. <laughs> Not. <laughs> Cold grey three. Um, this one again, silver. I don't think they ever come in a colour that's not silver. I'm not going to try and match the shine on this one. For me, that's just too difficult. So I'm just going to start here. And then fade it that way. And start here made it that way. I just find that the easier way to do it. Just my opinion. And the hand guard again. Dark here and a bit lighter at the top. Now here we just have a little sort of knob on top of the handle. I think I'm going to do that in this colour. I'm thinking maybe it is metal. Maybe it's the sort of that goes right through. I don't know. And our handle, a little different colour to this one. I could do it black. It's a bit boring, isn't it? Um, let's go for that one. Now this colour, this colour will be nice. We haven't used it yet. Burnt ochre. So we've got a sort of orangey brown. I think that might work. I'll try darker here. A bit lighter up there. And I'm going to try and just it up. So I've got a lighter bit up there. I want a little bit there. I want that quite a bit darker there. I'm going to grab the, um, the burnt sienna. I need to sharpen it and just put a little bit of shadow down here at the bottom. Tiny tad, tiny touch. Now we've got um, 
I've got more beads. I think I'll do these beads all the same colour again. I just find that a little bit easier for me to manage. Um, so we've got our pink ones here, we've got our purple ones here, so we need a different colour. Oh, excuse me, obviously beads come in all sorts of different colours. I'm thinking maybe blue, but I've got hiccups. <laughs> Not that that matters, but just to let you know because it's exciting. Um, let's go for the thalo blue. Here we go. Let's do our beads in that colour. We can do these before we finish. I think I've probably been going quite a long time, but anyways, it's not lunchtime yet, so I could do a bit longer. So I wanted to have dark outside, a bit lighter in the middle. It's quite hard when it's not a full circle you have to sort of guess you have to almost go like that to sort of work out where the center is i think it's about there i'm hoping that my um gel pen's dry down here it is and we'll do these beads and then we'll do the white pen on the beads and the swords and then it'll be lunchtime so it will give me time for it to dry before I decide whether I'm going to come back and make another video or do some editing. There we go, that one sort of shine there. It's tricky isn't it? I'm just doing my best guessing really. Where they're touching each other, there'd be shadows, be a bit darker. We can put, we can get some darker colour in in a minute. Getting thirsty again. I haven't had much to drink this morning. I had a, my son made me a coffee at breakfast time, which is good. And then I had another one. That's it. She have three drinks in the morning. I haven't even had any water. And it's hot. I need to get a big drink at lunchtime. Or two. Sounds like it's raining again. That'd be nice. My sister said they'd had thunder and rain where they were and it hasn't been forecast across I know there was a threat of thunderstorms in some parts of the country she said it wasn't forecast by her you know in her area right we're gonna put you some black to uh, get some shadows in here so down the ones down here be really quite dark so I'm just trying to darken these areas a bit and then where they're overlapping. It's a little bit fiddly. You might decide not to bother. I'm hoping it will just give it a slightly more three-dimensional look. But sometimes it can have the impact of making the beads look like they're bent. So I'm hoping it won't do that, but yeah. So white white pen time. So we have the jelly roll eight. I'm gonna move across this way and I'm not going to do the outside of the beads as we haven't been doing that. I'm just gonna do mark on a little bit to make them look shiny. Because I figure that as they're treasure, we won't do the ones underneath because they're in shadow. Um as they're treasure. I think it has to be shiny and look special. Okay, now the sword. We can see the sword. So put a bit of shine on this bit and then we'll white out the handle. I want to white out that bit too. 
I think that helps the shiny bit to show up, not being distracted by the um, pattern on it, which I'd rather just sort of ignore. And I'm going to do around that bit too because that's metal. Do the same here. Go around there. Doesn't matter if you can see a bit of black through. I'm just trying to trick the eye a bit. Make it look more shiny. There now. I've left the black on this handle, I think it looks odd. So I'm going to take that all away. But on this handle it's fine because um, it's part of the pattern there and also that's black so you can't see it. So I think that's okay. Um, leaving it on our beads. Uh, we've done all that. I think that is us for now. Yeah, I think I'm going to make that too. I have got no idea how long this video has been because I was disturbed. But uh, I think I shall leave it there. It's come out a bit. There we go. It's a bit shorter. I'm sorry, but you know we'll get there. We've got yeah, we've got a couple of bits to do on this page. It's coming together, isn't it? And I'm feeling far less daunted than I was at the beginning, and I hope that's the case for you as well. But for now, I say thank you so much for watching. Hope you have a really super day and happy colouring. <laughs>